Okay, so let's start to discuss uh, this exercise uh, number three, number four, and number five. Okay, so uh, number three is very simple. Uh, number three is very similar with uh, number one. Okay, number three it says that um, okay, figure below show a car of mass 1200 kilograms, okay, moving at an acceleration of two meters per second per second. Okay, so if the ex if the frictional force acting on the car is 750 newton, find its engine thrust. Okay, so let's say this is the car. Uh, the mass of the car is 1,200. Okay, and the acceleration is two meter per second. The friction is uh, 750 Newton. Okay, so we want to calculate the engine thrust. So the engine thrust is a force, uh, the total force that is produced by the car. Okay, so very simple, we just use F equals to MA. Okay, so this force will be the total of what of the uh, thrust and uh, friction. Okay, thrust and friction. Eh? So uh, thrust, okay, we just put F lah, Okay, plus the friction. So friction is in the opposite direction. So negative seven hundred and fifty newton. Okay, the mass of the car one two zero zero. Acceleration is two. So we will be able to get that the thrust will be 3,100 and three thousand one hundred and fifty Newton. All right. Okay. Next is uh, number four. Okay. Number four, it says, okay, two forces, F1 and F2, act on a wooden block which is placed on a table. The friction between the table and the block is 3 newton. Which pair of forces, F1 and F2, will accelerate the block? Okay, if we want the block to be accelerated, that means the net force cannot be zero. Okay, the net force cannot be zero. Okay, let's look at the first situation. Eh? A. F1 is 4 newton, F2 is 7. So that means like this. Okay, um, 4, 7. Okay, 4 newton, 7 newton. If like this, that means the resultant force will be how much? The resultant force will be 3 newton. Right? Okay, or I show the calculation. Okay, the resultant force will be negative 7 plus 4. So it will be equal to uh, negative. 3 newton. So this negative 3 newton is in uh, is to the left. 3 newton to the left. And it says that the friction is 3 newton. So what does it mean by friction 3 newton? It means by it means that the maximum friction between the block and the table can go up until 3 newton. So if the Resultant force from these two forces are 3 newton to the left, then that means the friction will work against, will work in the uh, opposite direction okay, of 3 newton. So that means at the end, this 3 newton plus the friction of 3 newton, then it will become zero. Okay, the net force, uh, sorry, the resultant force will become zero. Okay, so we need a combination where the 
resultant force is not equal to zero. Okay, so let's look at number two. Okay, the B, uh, B, eight and five. So you see this one is extra three newton. So again, the friction will work against the extra three newton. So the resultant force will become zero. C, six and four. You see uh, what happened when it is six and four. Uh, Okay, uh, this is 6 Newton, this is 4 Newton. So what happened is the resultant force of these two is 2 Newton, right? Okay, it's 2 Newton. But it says that the friction is 3. So does that mean the block is going to move? Answer is no, eh? okay, the block is not going to move. When we say that the friction between two objects is um, 3 newton, it means the maximum friction is 3 newton. So that means when here to the left is 4 newton, to the right is 6 newton, what happens is you have uh, extra 2 newton to the right. So what happens is the friction will work in the opposite direction. But the friction is not going to go until 3 newton. The friction will go until 2 newton and balance off the 2 newton. Okay, so that means at the end the uh, resultant force is also zero. So that means the wooden block is not going to accelerate. Okay, so you see here, uh, uh, what I'm trying to explain here is uh, how is it that the friction works. So uh, that means if you have extra, if this one is 1 newton, then the friction will be 1 newton. When this one is 2 newton, this, the friction will be 2 newton. When uh, this is 3 newton, the friction will also become 3 newton. But when this one, let's say, become 3.1 newton, okay, when this becomes 3.1 newton, let's say that. Okay, uh, 6.7.1, okay, for example, for example, let's say that if this one becomes 7.1 newton, so that means what happened? This one will be 3.1, this one will be 3. So, you see the friction eh, is maximum can go up until 3 newton. So, the, when when the, the force eh, between the resultant force between these two become 3.1, the friction cannot go more than 3. So it's maximum at 3 newton. Okay, the friction, the friction is maximum at 3 newton. So you see here, if like this, then that means you will have 0 0.1 newton extra which is the resultant force. That means, in this situation, the resultant force will be 0 0.1 Newton. So this 0 0.1 Newton will make this wooden block accelerate. Okay? So that means this wooden block will have acceleration, eh? even though the force is only extra a little bit by 0 0.1. Even if the force is there is even if the resultant force is 0 0.0000000000001, that small amount of force is still able to make the ob object accelerate. <coughs> okay, understand? Still, you can make it accelerate, but of course, the acceleration will be very, 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 very small. Okay? Alright. So now, Let's look at this. Okay. D, uh, okay, this one is 9 newton, this one is 5. So that means we have extra 4. Right, right. So that means we have uh, after cancel off the friction, which is 3, that means still got 1 newton extra. So that extra 1 newton will make the wooden block accelerate. Okay? So if you want to calculate the resultant force, uh, okay, we can do like this. F uh, the resultant force eh, for resultant force for D. Okay, 
so we can take the F2 okay oh, never mind F1 lah okay, F1 is 9 plus F2 is uh, negative 5 plus the uh, you see ah uh, the extra the extra force is to the right is positive the bigger one is positive so that means the friction will work in the opposite direction. So that means the friction will be negative 3. So what is it that we get is, this is negative 8. So 9 plus negative 8, we get positive 1 Newton. So this will be the uh, resultant force, 1 Newton. So this 1 Newton will make this wooden block accelerate. Okay? Okay. Uh, if you have any question, uh, as usual, if you have any question, please ask lah, uh, okay? Please don't, don't just keep quiet, uh, okay? Please don't just keep quiet, if you have a question, just ask. If you want to ask now, you can, if you want to ask here, you can just WhatsApp me, okay? Uh, Alright, so, uh, next. Okay, number five. Okay, the figure above show a car of mass 1,200 kg towing a caravan of mass 800 kg. Okay, uh, let me copy this one. Okay. Okay, so the figure above show a car of mass uh, 1,200 kg towing a caravan of mass 800 kg. So this car is 1,200 kg. The caravan is 800 kg. Both have acceleration of 1.5 meter per second per second. So this is very logical. Lah. The car is pulling the caravan. So of course, both of them will have the same acceleration okay if possible the car is pulling the caravan but have different acceleration right now. okay definitely both will have the same speed same acceleration okay so calculate the pulling force f of the car okay pulling force okay so uh, the force the pulling force come from the car car engine uh, okay, come from a car engine so the pulling force from the car engine uh, the force of this pulling force must be strong enough to pull uh, sorry this pulling force act on both the car and also the caravan okay a lot of people always mistake that uh, the pulling force is from the car so the pulling force is pulling the caravan only so that is not the case eh? so if you count like that then it will be uh, wrong so uh, the way we can calculate the pulling force is the pulling force is a force is the force that make both the car and the caravan go at 1.5 meter per second per second okay so f equals to ma okay so F is a pulling force. The mass is one two zero zero plus eight hundred. Okay, the pulling force act on the mass on these two, and these two will have the acceleration of one point five meter per second per second. So we will be able to get three thousand newton. Okay, so this three thousand newton is a pulling force. Eh? All right, next B. Eh? The tension T in the coupling between the car and the caravan. Okay, first thing here is I want to explain what is pulling force. Basically, a pulling force, eh, sorry, uh, what is the tension? Sorry, eh, the tension. What is tension? Tension is also a force. Tension is the name that we give to the force that exists in objects that are being stretched. Okay, objects that are being stretched. That means object they are cool, okay? You pull. So usually the thing that is uh, that we pull is rope, rubber band, spring, uh, chain, rope, string, or anything, okay? Wire, things that look like uh, rope, 
okay, things that look like rope. So for example, okay, for example, let's say uh okay, I want to explain what is tension. Eh? Okay, what is tension here? Okay, so basically, for example, uh, okay, let's say I have an uh, object. Okay, this object I I hang this object with a rope. Okay, so the weight of this object is ten newton. Okay, so this object is hanging on the rope. So that means uh, there must be a force that is in the opposite direction of this ten newton. Right now, there must be a force that is in the opposite direction of this ten newton. Then only this object is hanging there and not moving, right? Now. Okay. So this opposite force come from where? Come from the rope, lah. This rope, okay. There is a force, okay. Uh, there's a force that acting upward, and the force act on the object through the rope, okay. Through this rope. So that means there is a force inside this rope, okay, acting along this rope. So this force that acts along this rope is what we call a tension, lah. okay. Uh, so this force is the tension, okay. So uh, you see, just now I say that the tension is a force that acts when an object or a rope string, chain, wire, cable, uh, anything uh, uh, is being stretched or pulled right now. So this string, this rope, uh, this rope is being pulled right now. So this 10 newton pull downward. Okay? Uh, so there's a force acting along the uh, along this uh, rope. So this force is what we call the tension. Okay, this is what we call the tension. Lah. So, in the case of this car and the caravan, uh, the tension in the coupling, the coupling is this thing. Okay, the coupling. Uh, this is the, the coupling that uh, join the two objects together, lah. join the car and the caravan together. So, this thing is what we call the coupling. Okay, so uh, this coupling is being stretched and uh, being pulled. The car move forward, so uh, so uh, it pull and stretch the the coupling. Okay, so that means there is a tension working uh, along this uh, coupling. Okay, all right. So you see, uh, let's say that this is the car. Okay, one two zero 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 one. This is the caravan 800 kilogram. So there is a coupling here. Okay, so um, the force, the pulling force, uh, 3000 Newton, come from the car. Okay, come from the car. Okay, so this uh, one part of this 3000 Newton. Act on this 800 kilogram and make the 800 kilogram have acceleration of 1.5 meter per second per second. Okay, one part. So this part of 3000 newton act on the 800 kilogram from through the coupling. Okay. So when we look at this situation, we can look at this separately okay we can look at this separately separate the two objects so if we look at the 800 kilogram okay the force that make this 800 kilogram Accelerate at 1.5 meter per second. Come from the tension. Come from the coupling. Okay. Or oh, I use a tension. The symbol for tension is a capital T. Eh? Okay. 
and then this 1200 kilogram okay this 1200 kilogram there is a force that make it go 1.5 meter per time second or so okay so there is a force that push forward 300 with 3000 newton but this 3000 newton if act on this 1200 kilogram only definitely this 1200 kilogram will have acceleration that is higher than 1.5 meter per second so the reason why uh, this 3000 newton act on this 1200 kilogram only can give it 1.5 meter per second is because there is a opposite force ah, that is acting in the opposite direction so this force that act in the opposite direction is also the tension okay so here if we join these together we can see that the tension that work along this coupling they it work in two direction so when you stretch eh, when you pull a string a rope okay the tension in the rope work in both direction okay if you look at this object the tension is in uh, in this direction okay if you look at this object the tension will be in this direction okay uh, understand so same like this one uh, same like this one okay let's say that um uh, this object okay this object 10 newton right so the tension is also 10 newton so if we look from the perspective of this 10 newton Okay, the tension is 10 newton in the opposite direction but if you look from the perspective of the roof okay of the roof of this uh, this thing uh, okay this thing uh, the roof run uh, okay the roof then the tension is working downward okay the tension is uh, acting in downward direction like that okay that means if you are the if you are this object you will feel the tension is pulling up if you are the roof okay uh, if you are the roof you will feel the tension is pulling downward so join together um, you see the tension is working in, in acting in two direction okay acting in two direction so this is uh, the tension uh. Okay, so now uh, the question want us to calculate the tension in the coupling between the car and the caravan. So uh, when we want to calculate this tension, we only we we can calculate just by using one of the object. You can calculate from the perspective of eight hundred kilogram also can. You want to calculate from the perspective of one thousand two hundred kilogram also can. Okay, get the idea. So, uh, so I show both, uh, okay, I show both. So let's say, uh, okay, let's say that uh, if we calculate the tension from the perspective of the 800 kilogram, so F equals to MA, so this force that act on this mass, Okay, this force is the tension. Uh, the tension act on the 800 kilogram, and the 800 kilogram have the acceleration of 1.5 meter per second. So that means the tension will be 1,200 newton. Okay, uh, 1,200 newton act on 800 kilogram. 800 kilogram will have acceleration 1.5 meter per second. Okay, now from the perspective of the car of this 1200 kilogram same thing also f equals to ma but now this force is the resultant force of these two 3000 and the tension so this is uh, 3000 plus the tension is in the opposite direction so negative t okay equals to the mass is 1200 Acceleration is 1.5 meter per second. So we will be able to calculate that the tension is. So we get same thing. 
1200 newton okay so you see the tension is uh, same also 1200 newton okay this one also 1200 newton all right so uh, so you can calculate the tension from any perspective you can calculate from this point of view also can you calculate from this point of view also can okay but uh, one thing that students always get confused with tension is that they look at it in whole the whole thing when you look at this thing all together well here got 800 here got 1200 here got tension in two direction this one also 1 1.5 this also 1 1.5 this one got 3000 so you will feel like there is the, this problem is too complicated but actually it's not complicated you have to break it down okay you break it down you have to look at one object at a time okay this object uh, what are the forces that acting on this object what is the force on this object what is the acceleration because you see here uh, f equal ma how many things inside this one f equal ma only got three things only okay so this mass is one object okay uh, this mass what is the force the end of this mass this mass have one acceleration so if you think like that then you can make a complicated problem more simple okay uh, you break down the problem into parts divide and conquer lah, okay divide and conquer uh, split the the difficult a very complicated problem into parts by parts and then you, you look at it then easier for you to uh, solve the problem lah. okay okay uh, now we want to con continue uh, with the problem involving result of force mass and acceleration of an object and the situation is inside a lift or elevator okay so uh, one important thing about this situation inside a lift or elevator where it involves a weighing machine okay weighing machine inside a lift is that the reading on the scale is the normal reaction force okay reading on the scale is a normal reaction okay so the normal reaction uh, is the upward force ah. okay it's a force that go in the opposite direction as the weight the reason why we have this normal reaction from the weighing machine is because the weight of the girl is pushing down on the weighing machine so this surface the weighing machine the surface of the weighing machine will definitely need to produce an opposing force in the opposite direction of the weight then only can stop the weight lah, okay can balance off the, the weight if if the weight uh, is so big that the weighing machine cannot produce a result a, a reaction force that is big enough to stop the weight then that means the weighing machine will break up you get the idea okay uh, here also i want to take this chance to uh, explain a bit about this uh, reaction force uh, um, normal reaction okay because uh, we discussed about tension so now i want to discuss a bit about uh, reaction force okay so reaction force is uh, very natural uh, okay an object will definitely uh, produce a uh, reaction force okay so let's say uh, we have a, a plank okay let's say we have a plank so if you push the plank okay uh, if you push the plank with your hand eh? okay uh, you push with your hand if you push with 10 newton the surface of the plank will produce 10 newton in the opposite direction okay then the plank will not move lah. okay the wood will not move the plank will not move because balance you increase to 20 the reaction force also increase become 20 you increase until 100 then the reaction also become 100 but let's say because this is a wood like a piece of wood right now so if that means that if the force is too big let's say 
is 10,000 Newton. Okay, this piece of wood, this plank cannot produce uh, 10,000 Newton. Maximum, let's say, is uh, 9,000, uh, okay, for example. Okay, maximum 9,000. So if the maximum reaction force that can be produced by the wood is 9000, so what will happen? This wood will break now. Okay, it will break. Uh, then your hand can pass through. Uh. Okay, get the idea. Okay, uh, that is what happened. Uh. So, uh, so can you understand uh, the, the reaction force and uh, what happened um, when the force is too big? That the reaction that the object cannot produce a big enough reaction force to uh, to in, in the opposite lah, okay in the opposite direction to balance off the, the force okay so this is reaction force any object uh, who able to produce reaction force uh, okay uh, for example we are standing on the ground okay you are standing on the ground. So if your weight is uh, okay, let's say six hundred newton. Uh, okay, if your weight is six hundred newton, so that means the ground must produce a reaction force of six hundred newton also, uh. So let's say you are if you are standing on mud, okay, or standing on a surface where the that means the ground is very soft for example. Okay, let's say the ground is very soft. So the ground cannot produce 600 Newton. Uh, maximum can produce uh, 550 Newton uh, for example. Maximum the ground can produce 560 Newton. So what happens is, that means you have resultant force of 50 Newton downward. Uh. So this resultant force of 50 Newton it will make you accelerate downward. Okay? Uh, so you will sink into the ground and uh, then. So uh, this is reaction force. Okay? Get the idea? Huh? Okay, now. Okay, so same thing also. Uh, the girl standing on the weighing machine. So the weight of the girl need to be counter okay need to be balanced off by by a uh, reaction force uh, and we know the reaction force that is produced by the weighing machine is enough to balance the weight because if not that means the weighing machine will break up uh, the girl will pass through the weighing machine right, uh, okay so since the girl is not breaking since the weighing machine doesn't break and the girl passed through the weighing machine, so that means the weighing machine is strong enough to produce a reaction force to balance the weight. Okay, so first thing is, uh, what is the weight of the girl? So the weight of the girl to calculate the weight, eh? okay, this is something that we already learned in form four lah. Okay, weight equals to mass times the gravitational acceleration. So the gravitational acceleration we always take it as nine point eight one meter per second lah. Okay, so the mass is 50, so gravitational uh, acceleration is 9.81, so the weight of the girl will be 490.5 newton. Downward, lah, okay, downward. Okay, if you put this one as negative, then you will get negative. Okay? Okay, uh, why negative? Because uh, usually downward direction we put as negative, lah, okay, downward direction we put as negative. So, for example, this one, lah, stationary. So if the lift is stationary and not moving, so that means both the girl and the weighing machine is not moving. Okay, the girl is not moving. So if the girl is not moving, okay, we calculate the resultant force. Uh, uh, we calculate the 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 um the effect of the resultant force. Okay, this is the resultant force F equals to m a. So this resultant force act on this mass. This mass will have this acceleration. So the resultant force will be the total of the weight and the reaction. Okay, so weight plus reaction. So uh, this total weight and reaction act on this mass, this mass will have this acceleration. So how to calculate the weight? The weight is mg uh, plus reaction equal ma. Okay, so the weight will be uh, 50, mass is 50 kilogram, the gravitation acceleration negative 9.81. 
Why? Why negative nine point eight one? Because going downward. Okay. The gravitational acceleration is downward, so we put negative lah. Negative nine point eight one plus reaction equals fifty. The max and the acceleration is zero. Why acceleration zero? Because stationary. So when the object is stationary, of course the acceleration is zero meter per second per second. So acceleration is zero, and we calculate and we will get that the reaction force is four hundred ninety point five newton, which is the same as the weight of the girl. So you see, when the lift is stationary, not moving, the weight and the reaction will be the same, lah. Okay, equal. All right. Now. Move upward. Okay, what happens if the lift is moving upward with acceleration one meter per second? If the lift move upward with acceleration one meter per second, that means the lift push the weighing machine. The weighing machine push the girl, and the girl can go up with acceleration of one meter per second. So if the girl can go up with uh, acceleration of one meter per second. This means what? This means that the reaction must be bigger than the weight, lah. Okay, uh, the reaction must be bigger than the weight. Then only the girl can accelerate up, right? Lah? Okay. So now, if you want to calculate the the reading on the scale, that means we want to calculate the reaction, lah. The normal reaction force is how much? Okay. So. F equals to m a. So this is the resultant force that act on the girl. So the resultant force that act on the girl is the weight plus the reaction, and the weight is mass times uh, m mg lah. Okay, mg. So uh, I I think I'm not going to write one more line lah. Okay, because it's the same thing. Eh? same thing as this one. So I not going to write. So the weight to calculate the weight is fifty. Okay, times negative nine point eight one plus R the reaction. Okay, this reaction is the one that we work, that we are looking for lah. Equals to the mass fifty acceleration of the girl is upward, so positive one meter per second. Okay, downward is negative, going upward is positive, so we put this acceleration as uh positive one. All right. Okay, so this reaction will be okay. So you see that it is five hundred and forty point five newton. Okay, you see on that. So now, uh, you see, uh, the weight of the girl is four ninety point five, four hundred ninety point five newton. The reaction right now is five hundred and forty point five newton. So that means the reaction. The force going upward is bigger than the weight. Okay, bigger than the weight. Then that means we will have a resultant force. Okay, resultant force that will act on the girl and make the girl accelerate up at one meter per second. Okay, so this is what happens when the lift. Is moving upward with acceleration one meter per second. Okay, the weighing machine will show a reading that is larger than the weight. Okay, I repeat ah, when the lift is accelerating upward, the reading. Okay, the reading on the scale, on this scale, it will show a reading that is larger than the weight of the girl. Okay, ah, because it. The the weighing machine is pushing the girl upwards, so the force that push upwards must be bigger than the weight. Then only can uh, accelerate. If it's bigger, then that means the compression on the weighing machine will be greater, so the reading of the scale will be greater than the weight. Okay, so this is the reading of the scale lah, five four zero point five newton. Okay, get the idea. Actually, you can experience this also if you, okay, if you uh, go to a building that have a lift. Okay, uh, you you just bring together with you a weighing machine, lah. Okay, a weight. 
Okay, if your house got a way, now you bring the way, go to a lift, and then you try to see what will happen to the reading of the way of the weighing machine uh, when the lift is going upward. Uh, you can see the reading uh, when the lift is not moving, the reading show your weight. But when the lift is going upward, you can see that the reading will show uh, the reading will be greater than your weight when the lift is accelerating upward. Okay? Uh, even if you don't have the weighing machine, I'm sure that you got feel this before. When you take the lift and when the lift move upward, you can feel like your body become heavier. Right now, okay? Uh, you got feel this before. You take the lift, uh, go up. When the lift is going up, uh, you feel your body become heavier. Okay, uh, like that. So this is uh, what you. What, this is this shows that the floor push upwards at the uh, with a force that is greater than your weight lah. That's why you feel your body is heavier. Okay. Okay, now we want to look at uh, different different situations. Just now is um, upwards, accelerate upward eh, at one meter per second. So now, uh, what happens if move upward with constant velocity? Okay, the lift go up, but the uh, but constant velocity. If constant velocity, that means the acceleration is zero meter per second per second. So again, okay, if you want to calculate the resultant force. F equal m a. Therefore, the resultant force will be weight plus the reaction. So this weight, uh, fifty times negative nine point eight one. Mass is fifty. Acceleration will be zero. Okay, because constant velocity. So if constant velocity, so the reaction. 490.5 Newton. Okay, uh, so the that means uh, the girl, this one the weight and the reaction they are equal. Okay, both equal, so the resultant force is zero. Okay, result you see uh, acceleration zero, that means resultant force zero. Uh, so that means the force downward, force upward is equal. So reaction equal to the weight. Okay. Next, uh, if the lift move upward with deceleration, one meter per second, that means it becomes slower and slower. Going up but getting slower and slower. Okay, so what will be the reading? Okay, so we if move up but deceleration one meter per second, so that means the acceleration is negative 1 meter per second per second because deceleration getting slower okay deceleration is negative acceleration huh? so negative 1 meter per second okay so f equals to m a weight plus reaction so the weight is 50 times negative 9.81 mass is 50 the acceleration is negative one. Okay, so we will be able to get that the reaction is okay uh, is four four zero point five newton. Okay, so you see uh, uh why is it that it is smaller? You see on uh, this one the reaction is smaller than the weight. Okay, this 490.5 newton is the weight of the girl. Now the when is deceleration, the reaction is smaller than the weight of the girl. This is very logical. You see, eh? the girl. If decelerator eh, getting slower and slower, that means the force downward must be bigger. Then the force upward, right now, the weight must be larger than the reaction. Then only the uh, the girl will experience deceleration, getting slower and slower. 
okay so you see this after we calculate the reaction is smaller than the weight okay so this is very logical lah. okay eh? okay next uh, move downward with acceleration one meter per second per second okay if move downward with acceleration one meter per second what will be the acceleration down is negative right acceleration one meter per second so that means the acceleration will be negative one okay meter per second all right so f equals to m a weight plus reaction weight is 50 times negative 9.81 mass is 50 acceleration is negative 1 so now it is also 440.5 newton okay also 440.5 newton okay so you see again uh, it is smaller okay smaller the reaction is smaller than the weight so you see uh, again uh, accelerate down okay accelerate if there is an acceleration downward so that means the upward force must be smaller than the downward okay upward must smaller than up downward then only can accelerate down right now okay uh, so very logical next move downward with constant velocity move down but constant velocity constant velocity that means acceleration is zero meter per second per second okay that means it's zero huh? so f equals to m a weight plus reaction equals to mass times acceleration weight 50 times negative 9.81 mass is 50 acceleration is 0 so again the reaction will be 490.5 newton okay uh, you see when acceleration is 0 that means reaction force oh, sorry that means resultant force is 0 Okay, resultant force zero, that means the force down and the force up is balanced. Okay, so that means the reaction is equal with the weight, lah, which is 490.5. Okay, next. Okay, move downward with deceleration one meter per second per second. Okay, move down, but getting slower and slower. So down is negative deceleration is negative so negative become positive lah. so that means the acceleration is one meter per second per second okay so f equal m a weight plus reaction 50 times negative 9.81 50 acceleration is one Okay, so the reaction is five four zero point five newton. Okay, you see now the reaction is larger than the weight because going down but getting slower and slower. Okay, decelerate. That means the force upward must be bigger than the force downward. Okay, force up smaller than force down. So make it decelerate. When you're going down, decelerate, getting slower and slower. Okay, very logical. Next. Okay, now special special case the lift break and experience free fall that means the lift broken and fall down <laughs> fall down free fall if free fall what does it mean if free fall it means the acceleration is equal to 
gravitational acceleration right now okay if free fall that means acceleration is the same as gravitational acceleration that means acceleration equals to negative 9.81 meter per second per second okay right if you still remember what is free fall free fall is the when the object fall down under the influence of gravitational force only that means we ignore the air resistance and so on okay then the object is experiencing free fall okay i repeat that free fall is where we say that the object fall down under the influence of gravitational force only so if uh, influenced by gravitational force so the object will accelerate with gravitational acceleration so what will be the reaction force okay with Okay, so you see this one 50 times negative 9.81. Wait, 50 times negative 9.81. So that means the reaction will be 0. Okay, 0 Newton. Okay, so when the reaction is 0, that means the force upward is 0. Eh? So that means the weight is the only force that pull the girl down okay uh, so the girl will experience uh, free fall that means falling at gravitational acceleration okay 9.81 meter per second per second okay okay so uh, try this exercise eh? okay try this exercise uh, okay so you see uh, the the question asks you to find out what is the reading so the reading uh, okay i explain a bit up uh, okay so this reading is uh due to this this spring balance show a reading because there is a force pull downward right uh, okay so you see here there is a tension t you see this t is going upward because this tension t going upward is from the perspective of the weight就是说这个T啊,上向上的这个tension啊,它是从这个东西的角度来看,从这个东西的角度来看,这个tension就是向上。如果是从这个spring balance the arrow going upward, so that means this tension going upward eh, the, is from the perspective of the weight. And the spring balance can show a reading, it's because of a tension that is going downward. Okay, a tension that is going downward, make tension going downward, pull the spring, right? Eh? So make the spring balance show a reading. Eh? Okay, uh, so that means eh, this uh, reading will be equal to the tension ah. get the idea okay ah. the spring balance have reading because pull by tension so of course the reading will be the same as the tension so that means if you want the reading you calculate the tension you get the reading because they are both the same okay eh? so if you want to calculate the reading on spring balance uh, Basically, what you do is just calculate the tension when lift is stationary, calculate the tension when lift move upward and acceleration, when lift move downward and acceleration. Okay? So, um, okay. Okay, got a little bit of correction. Uh, this question, uh, the, it says that take G equal 10 meter per second per second. Uh, change this into 9.8. Uh. Change this into 9.8 9.8 meter per second per second Okay? Sorry, 9.81 9.81 meter per second Okay, let's discuss 
Okay, so a box of mass 1.6 kilograms suspended from spring balance hanging from the ceiling of a lift. Okay, what is the reading on the spring balance if the lift is stationary? Okay, so uh, actually this is exactly the same like uh, just now, the, this one, the lift. Okay, so... Okay, so we want to calculate the tension. Uh, so you see the, you look at the object. Okay, you look at the object. So this is the weight. Okay, and the, the force that pull upward is the tension. Uh, okay, the force that act in the opposite direction. The force that act upward is the tension. So we want, so this tension will be equal to the reading of the spring balance. So we want to calculate this tension. So, F equals to MA. So this force, this is resultant force, right? Now. Okay, resultant force is total of the force. Okay, this tension plus this weight. Okay, so weight plus the tension equals to MA. So this weight will be mass times the gravitation acceleration. So the mass will be 1.6. The gravitation acceleration is negative 9.81. Okay, because it's going downward plus the tension. So the mass is 1.6. Stationary, so that means the acceleration is 0 meter per second per second. Okay, 0. So the tension will be equal to 15.696 or 15 15.7 also can now, okay, if you round off. Okay, if you round off, you can uh, 15.7 in this case also can be accepted. Lah. Okay. Actually, okay, so this question, uh, there are two ways that you can uh, two ways that you can solve. One way is like this. Let me you look at it. Uh, you look at it from everything. That means from the beginning until the end of the whole situation, you put inside, the whole situation put inside the equation. Another way that you can do is you already know that, okay, that means uh, another way is you already know, oh, stationary, lift is stationary, so that means acceleration is zero. If acceleration is zero, that means the, uh, the resultant force will be zero. That means I already know that the resultant force is going to be zero because I look at the question, the question says it's stationary, so I already know the resultant force is zero. And I already know if the resultant force is zero, that means the tension and the weight will be the same. Right? Uh, that means I already know. Okay? Uh, this is uh, the second way of uh, looking at this problem. Uh, I already know. Okay? Uh, this one, the first method, uh, this one, this method is where I don't know. I don't know whether the weight and the tension is the same or not. All I know is that uh, this is the way to calculate the weight. This is this is the acceleration. Uh, okay, the acceleration is zero. Okay, let's find the tension is how much. Okay, uh, like that. So the other way is I already know that the resultant force will be zero, and I if resultant force is zero, that means the weight. That means the tension will be equal with the weight. So I can straight away calculate the weight it will be uh, mass times gravitation acceleration. So 1.6 times uh, 9.81. So it will be equal to 15.696 Newton. Okay, this is another way. But this, this way uh, they got got pro and con, okay? The good thing about this way is you uh, you can do it fast, okay? Very fast, okay? Faster. But the thing that is not good with this method is that means you need to have a really, really deep understanding of the whole situation. That means you need to know that, okay, uh, result of Acceleration zero, okay. You need to know, okay, stationary, that means acceleration is zero. Acceleration is zero, that means the resultant force is, uh, that means the tension and the weight is the same, that means resultant force is zero. 
okay you, you need to know this at the back of your hand that means you need to uh, know very very clearly then you can say that this tension equals to weight okay like that then you can do this huh? okay if you already know you can do like this no problem okay you can do like this no problem okay so let's look at b yeah Okay, uh, the lift move upward at acceleration of 2 meter per second per second. Okay, lift move upward at acceleration of 2 meter per second per second. So, same thing, F equals to MA. So, the resultant force, it will be the weight plus the tension. Okay, so the weight will be 1.6 times negative 9.81 plus the tension is... Uh, the one that we are looking for mass 1.6 okay acceleration it says that it is going up at acceleration of 2 meters per second so 2 so the tension we that we get it will be 18.896 newton so you can see that the tension is greater than the weight you see how uh, the weight of the object is 15.696 18.896 is bigger so that means uh, the box will be able the object will be able to go up with an acceleration uh. okay good idea okay eh? so next uh, okay if this one uh, if I another way to solve this is for example like what I say just now okay you already know okay move upward that means you got acceleration okay that means the resultant force is not equal to zero okay that means resultant force not equal to zero so that means um you can calculate the tension uh, that means uh you already know okay you see that okay the it is accelerating upward so that means uh the tension must be bigger than the weight so that means the resultant force must be tension minus weight lah. okay tension minus weight is the resultant force so uh the resultant force equals to the uh m a so tension uh, minus the weight uh, 1.6 times negative 9.81 uh, oh, no, no. Uh, this one uh, uh, don't put the negative okay because already minus so uh, equals to the mass uh, 1.6 times acceleration is 2 okay uh, so uh, we will be able to get 18.896 newton also but uh, again uh, this one is a bit complicated lah, okay a bit complicated okay actually not advisable to do like this lah. okay because there is a chance that you may get confused whether to put negative or not put negative if this one uh, if that means you put the whole story inside okay you put the whole story into the equation and then you just let it run Okay, you just let it just calculate and find the, the tension. Okay, and then uh, then you can find. Okay, but this one you need to uh, put in a lot of detail inside. You need to be careful. Okay, uh, due to this one, uh, okay, due to this one, you put uh, tension minus the, the weight. This is another way, uh, but um, not advisable uh, for this one. Not advisable. This one is a, a better way. Uh, better way, more complete and you put in everything that you every concept that you learn you put inside here okay okay c eh? c is it says that lift move downward at an acceleration of three meter per second then go down accelerate three meter per second so f equal ma weight plus tension is the resultant force equals to ma so the weight is 1.6 times negative 9.81 plus tension okay the mass is 
Okay, the acceleration is it says that it is um, accelerate downward three meters per second. So accelerate down, down is negative, so negative three. Okay, the acceleration is negative three. So we will be able to get that the tension is 10.896 Newton. Okay, we will be able to get the tension is 10.896. So you see, uh, this is very logical. Lah. Again, the tension is smaller than the weight. Tension is up, weight is down. So if one to accelerate down, that means the weight must be bigger than the tension. Then only can accelerate downward. Uh, so here you see that the tension is only 10.896. The weight is um, the weight is uh, fifteen point six nine six. Okay, so the tension is smaller than the weight. Uh. Then the the object can accelerate downward. Okay. Okay. Next, we want to look at pulley. Okay, so this pulley is a different situation. Okay, but if this is still under the same thing that we want to learn. Uh, the thing that we want to learn here is problem involving resultant force, mass, and acceleration of an object. So the two situations uh, that okay, problem solving problem uh, that involve resultant force, the two situations here, the first one is lift. Or elevator okay like what we already discussed ah, just now the second situation is the situation of a pulley okay so what is a pulley eh? what is a pulley a frictionless pulley serve to change the direction of a force okay this is the function of a pulley okay the function of a pulley is to change direction of force so um I explain a little bit more about the pulley. Okay, so the tension that results from pulling at the end of the string or rope has the same magnitude along its entire length. So that means like this, okay? Uh, you see, uh, the pulley is basically like a wheel. Okay, a wheel. Okay, this is what we call a pulley. Eh? So we put the rope here, pass through the pulley. And there is an object here. Okay, let's say this object has the weight of 10 Newton. Okay, if I don't want this object to fall down, that means I must have a tension. I must exert a tension of 10 Newton upward, right? Or not. Okay, there must be a tension of 10 Newton upward. So this tension of 10 Newton upward. After pass through the pulley, it will become 10 Newton downward. So that means if you pull, you hold on to the rope and you pull down with a force of 10 Newton, that means this 10 Newton that you pull downward, it will become a tension that is going upward and go against this 10 newton so this 10 newton downward will become 10 newton upward and stop this object from falling down so you see this 10 newton down become 10 newton up so um, the pulley change the direction of force you see that okay so that is a function of uh, pulley now. so the tension that results from pulling at the end of string or rope has the same magnitude along its entire length. That means this 10 newton that you pull down, it will become the tension. Okay, it will become the tension along the rope. Okay, it will become the tension along the rope. Get the idea. Okay. So, uh, so the the tension along the rope is all the same. Actually, this is the same thing as what we see in the like in the uh, the car okay the coupling just now okay along the coupling the tension is all the same along the rope along the spring balance the, the string the tension is all the same okay 
So that means if you look from the perspective of the of the hand, uh, okay, from the perspective of the hand, the tension is upward la, actually, okay, from the perspective of the hand. Okay, if you don't look at so that means this situation can be split into two. The hand pull down with 10 newton, the hand will feel a tension upward of 10 newton. If from the perspective of the box, the box has a weight of 10 newton and the box will feel the tension of 10 newton upwards. Okay, like this. Okay, can split into two. Okay, eh? So again, you see along this, uh, along the, the road, the tension uh, act in both directions. Okay, the tension act in both directions. Alright, and it's the uh, same, uh, okay? same magnitude, uh, the tension of the road act in both directions and it is the same. Okay, so a little bit of uh, interesting thing about this pulley is that it can act as, uh, it can function as force multiplier also okay it can act as force multiplier that means like this that means uh, if you have um, okay okay let's say uh, the example just now lah. okay if this is 10 newton then you need to pull with 10 newton right lah. okay but if you have two pulley, okay, two pulley, okay, if you have two pulley, okay, if you have two pulley, you can actually multiply the force, okay, like this. You need three la. Uh, wait. If you have two pulley like this, okay, and you Wait, eh? uh, wait. Three lah, okay, three pulley, one pulley here. Okay, if you have multiple pulley, eh? so the Ah, uh, two pulley like this, okay? Two pulley, eh? Okay, if you have two pulley like this, okay? So, if you exert 10 newton, eh? So, this 10 newton can become 10 newton and here also 10 newton. Both side 10 newton. So, that means you can pull an object of 20 newton. Using 10 newton, you can pull 20 newton object up. Okay, by using two pulley like this. Okay, you can pull uh, 20, 10 newton can pull 20 newton. So it can act as a force multiplier. So you can pull uh, a system of pulley and many many pulley, and uh, you can multiply by the the force by a lot lah. So you can like use 10 newton to pull 50 newton. Use 10 newton to pull 100 newton also can. Okay, so uh, but don't worry about this system of pulley lah. In SPM, we are not going to uh, go discuss about this system of pulley. But I just want to expose to you. I want to introduce to you that pulley also can be used like that. Okay, this is a very interesting uh, function of a pulley. Okay.